Hey, good morning, folks. It's Ted here. Goodness, we got a lot to cover today. Uh, welcome, welcome to today's program here. I know it's a little ad hoc, but uh, some things I had to share with you that are really, really important. Uh, what I learned the other day is that the Wall Street has financialized the gross domestic product of the United States of America. And what that means is that uh, the U.S. gross domestic product is $26.36 trillion, okay? And Wall Street has found a way to be able to financialize that and sell it off as derivatives, okay? And what they basically did was they took 3.74 times or 374%, and that's 2023 numbers, of the total GDP and just created out of thin air additional investments out of it. Now, how do they back those investments up? Well, through the Dodd-Frank Act, they back them up by having a superior lien on your savings accounts and your checking accounts and any other accounts that has money in it. So you do not own the money that you think you do. OK, and we talked about the stocks. You don't own the stock certificates that you have either because you do not have a QCIP number. OK, you need to have a unique identifier. Look at all the artwork you're missing out on. OK, you don't own the stocks that you think you own. All right. All these have a unique identifier. And you also note on the back is the redemption information, okay, what's needed in order to be able to redeem the stocks. You tell me at this point in time, everything's completely digital and you trust it for that. All your life's earnings basically being tokenized or financialized or digitized and put into a, into a, uh, into account. So anyway, we're uncovering a lot here, folks, and I'm glad you guys are coming along for the ride. Uh, what I'd like you to do is please download this chart. This is a new seller chart here. Um, our friend, my friend, uh, took care of this and he made, uh, he made it new. His name is Carl and he has a section on our website right now called Carl's corner. Okay. Now you can download this. This is the amount of silver ounces or monster boxes that you need to have to be in the top. What percentage of the U S or excuse me, the global population. So you'll see here, the global population is currently 8.18 million people, billion people. Okay. But you really don't need that much in the way of ounces of silver in order to be in the top. Uh, let's see, with 60 ounces, looks like you could be in the top 1.3 percent. Now, if you guys step up and understand what is really going on, 15 monster boxes is a nice size. And that puts you in the 0.0485 percent of the global population. So this is money. This is finite. It's going to be the, it is the world over. Now, on Sundays, we're going to be starting up with called uh, Silver Sermons with uh, Pastor Norris. And he's gonna be talking to us on April 7th, I guess, where the interview was on April 8th, talking to us about talents and what a talent was. And I think you're gonna find it very, very interesting because a talent isn't what you think it is back in the biblical days. A talent was, um, it was, it was a measure of worth, okay? It represented purchasing power, okay? So we're gonna be talking about that. So um, what we'd like to get into is the possibility well, not actually the possibility is that the stock has been watered down and the whole financial system has been watered down. OK. And basically, we're talking about um, adding all this water into a big pot of soup. Well, if you add three point seven four times the amount of water that's already in there with water, you don't have much left. OK, so what that means is that we're looking at hyperinflation coming. There is no way out of this unless the dollar is completely repudiated before that time, which is possible. But a repudiation of the dollar would not mean a default and it would not mean hyperinflation. Basically, it says that the currency provided to the world through the BIS, the Bank for International Settlements, is in fact defunct, meaning it never had the right to, to be able to, uh, uh, to sell that kind of stuff into the marketplace in the first place. So... Let's take a look at what's going on with the bond market today, because you're going to see that the bond market is still inverted. OK, the two year is four point six one four. The 10 year is four point two. Does that make any sense? Why don't you borrow the money at 10 year and pay it back in the two year and you'll save point four percent. But what you're talking about, a lot of money that's exposed to these rising, fluctuating interest rates. OK, so think of it like this. You have the, these two things of water. OK. And it's on an even keel. It's on a seesaw. As one side goes up, the other side goes down. You get it too far out of whack. And what happens is the water comes, starts sloshing out of the bucket. And that is your money, folks. That's your money going down the tubes. So there are some screaming deals right now. If you all are interested in silver, we'll talk about that at the very end. Uh, we have some more information. 
Uh, but we want you to remember that it's 14 dimes equal one troy ounce. So 14 dimes would be a dollar forty. So a dollar forty in any combination of quarters and dimes and half dollars. Now it has to be the coins that have a ridge around the outside of it. Okay, and here in the United States. And the reason why the coins have a ridge around the outside is to keep people from clipping the coins. So a long time ago, when they first started uh, striking these coins, it was called strike as opposed to mint. They'd take a pre-measured ball of uh, gold or silver and they put it in a die. Okay, and the bottom of the die would be uh, concave, right? And the top would be convex. And what happens is they slam this uh, this die down on this ball of metal. It creates an image on the top and the bottom part of the metal, which makes a coin. So now what happens though is the outside edges of the, of the coin that was just struck are sort of flowered. So what people do, they get a handful of these coins and they gradually shave off some of the shave off some of the silver to gold around the outside of the coin. But what that does is it decreases the purchasing power, the amount now that, shut, that is shaved off. But again, as far as Keynesian economics is concerned, you can take one pie and feed the world, just got to make the slices a little bit thinner. Okay. So, um, what we're getting into is um, uh, the amount of silver that you're going to need in order to be able to protect yourself down the road, because what you're holding right now are actually receipts for the silver known as dollars. Now, the dollars were originally known as thalers, a German word. And the translation for thaler, if you go back far enough and use etymology in the Roman language of Latin, you'll find out that the original word meant silver. So thaler means silver. So um, uh, other things that are going on, guess, guess what's going on here? Larry Fink says that the love of gold is ruining the economy. Now, who is Larry Fink? Is Larry Fink the president of BlackRock? And BlackRock, the company that started and owns Aladdin, the programmed automated uh, selling machine that sell, buys and sells shares of stock? Okay. I think the answer to that is right. Yes, they do. So what? why would he have an interest in telling you to actually go out and buy silver and buy gold? He doesn't. A couple other things we've run across is a number of you have thousand ounce bars in depositories. Let's talk about this. Those thousand ounce bars are not fungible. Did you know that each thousand ounce bar is not an actual thousand ounces? It might be an ounce or two over, an ounce or two under, but the bottom line is it's not fungible. Okay. And it's not negotiable because who's going to take a thousand ounce bar that's worth $23,000? Who's going to do that? And then if they take it in, they're going to have to pay you at the time that they take it in, then have the bar sit in their safe for eight to 14 days to determine whether or not the bar has been stolen. So how much of the $23,000 do you think you're actually going to get? So we do have some people that are unwinding those types of transactions. It's good that you got the money out of the market. And a lot of you have actually made money on having moved into bars, a thousand ounce bars held at some depository in Delaware or Utah or wherever. Okay. But I think that with our current state of the situation, with the way that the, the threats of war and all this are concerned, I think it's time to circle the wagons and get your own money in your own hands. That being the case, what we've done in one particular situation is we had the bar shipped directly to, um, to Golden Eagle in this particular case, and they are then swapping these, um, these thousand ounce bars for monster boxes and junk dimes. So they're being very, very honest with these guys. I went back and I did the math myself. And by the time you factor in the shipping, and uh, and where we are as far as the pricing is concerned, Golden Eagle is very fair with them. So I do not receive any kind of commissions. I do not work for Golden Eagle Coin. They're one of the preferred um, uh, dealers that we have because I have experience with them. And there are other coin dealers out there as well. You can check around, see if you can find type one monsters. But I don't think you're going to find very many. So Golden Eagle does have a supply of them. If you're interested, what I'd like you to do is send an email to Eagle. Send an email to Eagle at TedSpeaks.net. And eagle, eagle, eagles. eagles? I'm sorry, eagles plural. Eagles at tedspeaks.net. Okay, and then if you're interested in junk silver, send us an email at junk at ted silver <laughs> tedspeaks.net. Okay, uh, so send an email to silver at ted speaks. What are we doing here? Junk. Junk. Uh, right, here we go. <laughs> Hi, I, I didn't know I was going on camera. So, <laughs> so hi. Uh, hi. Um, it, if you're interested in junk, it's junk at tedspeaks.net. If you're interested in eagles, it's eagles at tedspeaks.net. Now, where would any of us be without a good woman in our lives, huh? Hmm. <laughs> I hope I get a, cut, hit, a hug and a kiss for that afterwards. Absolutely. Oh, here we go. Here we go. So the thousand ounce bars aren't fungible. The very few places you can take them. Now, 
The only reason that I think you'd want to invest in a thousand ounce bar is if you had a direct market for them. Like maybe you're in the pharmaceutical industry or something. Okay. And you can sell them to say Merck chemical and they're going to make uh, pharmaceuticals or turn it into silver nitrate or something as a, as a medicinal type of medicine. Or maybe you're connected with a cell phone company like Ericsson or Apple or whatever, and you're going to sell the th silver bar to them and they'll pay you as much as they can for the silver that they need in order to make their electronics. And how about the solar panel people? So if you know these types of people, silver bars was a pretty good investment. Now it is a commodity. It's not money. So there will be a tax implication on it. But if you invest in the money of your country, and as, it is, as it is in the United States, there is no taxes on that. So if you walk in with a paper bill, a thousand dollar bill, and you walk out with a thousand dollars worth of, of, uh, of silver coins that we're going back to, is there is that a taxable event? Is it a reportable event? So if you go in and get change from the bank for a dollar, okay, and you're given these silver coins that might be worth, say, $50,000 a piece per ounce, am I talking about? That's not Ted being crazy. What that is, that is the Federal Reserve being crazy with their money creation. Like they're being so crazy that they're creating this stuff against air. As we talked about before on the U.S. debt clock, there are currently 394 people that all think they own the same one ounce of silver. So are these numbers of $50,000 actually outrageous? Well, especially when you consider the fact that the mining companies are not able to keep up. Look at this. The demand for silver is outstripping the mining, the miners' capabilities to be able to produce it. So look at the decrease in the number of miners that are having year over year decreases in mining output. So how are we going to keep up with, uh, with the demand for silver that's continuing to increase exponentially right now because of the increased demand through photovoltaics, well as uh, now the new, new money that we're going to be making out of it as well? Okay, so you'd be buying something that's finite and these bars might very well wind up going back into making coins out of them, but they're not coming from you. They would be coming, say, from truckloads of these things that are going to be going to an assayer or a smelter or whatever and melt them down and make them the right purity and make them in what are called planchets and the planchets are stamped eagles now right now of course they're making the type 2 american silver eagles 2024 and they'll be making the 2025 as well but you'll notice that there is a missing reed around the outside edge and that determines that indicates not only the year but also whether or not it's a type 1 or type 2. now imagine this We've been going quite well with no reports of uh, counterfeiting that I can recall until 2020, actually the first uh, six months of 2021. All of a sudden, we need some kind of immediate identification for the Eagles. I mean, um, you determine what it is that you're comfortable with, okay? Um, now, once the Type 1 American Silver Eagles are gone, I think the best deal right now would be to concentrate on the, uh, the junk silver. Because if you're able to pick up a bag of junk, just say it's $20,000, if you're around that, in that area, and for $20,000, you'd pick up 10,000 dimes, which would mean that each dime is $2. So if, a dime, if there are 14 dimes per ounce, that would mean that each ounce of constitutional silver would just cost you $28. And I think that's a heck of a deal. Now, for those of you who decide to get the bags of uh, junk silver, I suggest you get a little bit more than what you need because not many people are aware of the fact that you're going to need to be able to make change for an ounce of silver. And if you can divide that purchase into 14 increments, okay, you're going to be able to get closer to what the actual purchase price is. Now, for those of you that are pretty sharp, what you might say, hey, look, I think I'll get some extra dimes because they're scarce, not many of them, and other people will need them in order to make change with their one ounce silver rounds or one ounce uh, silver American Eagles, right? So instead of you getting 14 dimes per one because they didn't think ahead like you did, maybe you offer them 12 dimes and you make two dimes for every one that uh, for every dollar or whatever that uh, for every ounce it is that you that you convert for them. So they would hand you a one ounce silver round or whatever, and maybe you hand them uh, 10 or 12 real dimes. But if the, if the ratio is really 14 to 1, you see how you're coming out a little bit in the black. So um, silver in a bar form is not money. And we talked about how there are many different types of bars. There's dory bars. There's, uh, there's mineral bars. There's um, um, uh, pant bars. So there's all types of different types of bars that are out there. But what you think you might want to consider is the money of your country. Be proud of your country. Stay away from the taxes. And if somebody else is holding your money, like, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, one guy had over a million dollars being held by somebody else. I don't think you should be trusting anybody right now, folks. I think you trust God and you trust the periodic table and you got to trust the, the money of your country.
Okay. Now governments, sir, they're, they're the ones that are at war. It's not me fighting a war. Is it you not you fighting a war? It's our government fighting the war. Remember what I said earlier, never hold the script of a warring government. Because one day the government will either win or lose. Okay. And I think that right now it might be very well possible that the U.S. may lose this battle that we're fighting halfway around the world at Gaza or whatever. OK, but if we do, what happens to the dollar at that point? Well, we don't have to wait that long because the dollar is already being repudiated because the majority of the transactions right now are occurring outside the dollar and they're not U.S. They're not uh, U.S. dollar denominated transactions. So if the demand for the dollar is falling, OK, people are going to want to get rid of those old buggy whips, right? So a long time, we didn't have cars. We had horses and buggy whips were needed in order to whip the horse to get the horse, right? Right. You ask him, you tell him, and finally you got an assistant with the horse, right? So at any rate, when the horses went away and they were replaced by cars, what happened to all these tens of thousands of buggy whips? Interesting. What happened? Well, they all went away, didn't they? Okay. So silver in its raw form is not money. Silver is money when it is the sovereign coin of your country. In the United States of America, we use American silver, e American silver eagles and American gold eagles. OK, and then up until the uh, final quarter of 2021, we only had type ones. And all of a sudden type twos came around and now we have type twos. So I've been some questions about what's going on with it. Let, let's leave that for the conspiracy theorists. OK, the bottom line, there is a difference. If you're comfortable with it, buy the type twos. If you're not comfortable with it, then move on to uh, to junk dimes and junk quarters. There's plenty of that stuff out there. And at under $20,000 a bag, is a pretty good deal. So another thing that I came across today I wanted to share with you. Is, remember we were talking about your, your moral compass? Let me tell you this story. You heard about Planet Fitness? A woman goes into the ladies' room at Planet Fitness finding a 12-year-old girl wrapped in a, in a towel in the ladies' room, okay? And a man dressed as a woman is in there holding this child and hugging on this child. And the child looks very, very uncomfortable. And the woman says to the man, Get out of here. You're a man. He says, oh, no, I'm not. I'm dressed and I feel like a woman today. So she goes out and tells the, uh, the manager at Planus Fitness. And guess what happens? The manager takes the side of the crossdresser having a little foray or whatever with the 12-year-old girl. I don't think that's right. Do you? There are some things that absolutely cannot happen in this country or anywhere on the face of this planet. And that is abuse of our children. You want to know why I'm out here? We got to stop this stuff, folks. And we are going to stop it. We're going to expose it. Right now, we're exposing what's going on with your finances. You don't own them. You don't own your money unless it's in your own possession. Time is nigh, and I'm getting a little bit more forceful with this message because either you're going to get on the bus or you're going to go under it. Let me pass that by you again. Either you get on the silver train and you get on the bus or you're going to go under it. And if you go under it, you will not be able to afford to buy silver. Right now, I took a look at the mining ratios for, uh, for 1980 versus 19, uh, the year that we're in right now, 2024. And those mining ratios have come down 56%. So why don't we try to figure out what that, the cost of silver should be in today's dollars? Well, I did that, but I missed it. I misspoke. I made a mistake. Can you believe that? When I did the calculations, I did the calculations of dollars in 1980 dollars. So what we would have to do then is take the price of bacon, say, in 1980 and compare that to a pound of bacon today. So in 1980, a pound of bacon was $1.69. A pound of bacon right now is $6.96. So that multiplier would be almost five, wouldn't it? So that five times $115, which would be equating to what the mining ratio was in 1980 compared to today, because the mining ratio has gone from 17.1 in 1980 to 7.1. What that basically means, folks, is that the, the amount of effort going in to get silver is becoming more and more. It's taking more and more effort to get less and less out. And that uh, that economic metric that we're talking about is called EROI, energy returned on invested. So, again, these are the types of bars that, that are out there. If you have bars, what I suggest you do is send us an email, okay? And why don't you just go ahead and send this one to ted at tedspeaks.net, ted at tedspeaks.net, and we'll send you out the, uh, the report on the Dory bars, okay? Something else I've been asked to by a couple of people is to share a couple of the stories that we had as estate planning. And one of the stories that I'd like to share that Margaret Allen was extremely uh, – uh, touched over was there was this um, this widow and she was the neighbor of a young family and they were uh, they were homeschooling their four young children and uh, 
she was widowed and she had a fair number of properties and Mark, the next door neighbor, he had a couple of properties too to maintain the rental properties. So as uh, she would try to get help in order to maintain these properties, being a woman, she would typically be uh, taken advantage of by the male contractors. So she would reach out to her neighbor, Mark, and say, hey, can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? And Mark said, sure, but he never charged her for the labor, only charged her for the, uh, for the materials. So this lady had been listening to us on uh, WBJC and WCBM up here in Baltimore for a, a couple of years. And so one day she asked Mark to take her to our office in uh, Towson, Towson, Maryland. And uh, she comes in with Mark and we usher them into uh, to the conference room. We start sitting down and we get to know each other. And then it was about time for us to start the, the, the guts of the estate planning meeting. So I looked over to her and I said, uh, would you like to get started? She said, yes. And I said, well, they're going to talk to you about some pretty personal stuff here. Did you like, would you want Mark uh, to be a part of this meeting? She said, oh, definitely. I looked at Wilson, the attorney. He looked at me and said, well, this is interesting. So she said, told us a story about how Mark had been helping her for many, many years and would never accept any kind of uh, remuneration for his efforts, just the cost of materials. So we closed the door and we started talking. And she said that she wanted Mark, her next door neighbor, to be the sole beneficiary of her entire estate of $1.2 million. You should have seen Mark Ball. I tell you guys, if you don't let your emotions out once in a while, you're missing, you're missing, you're missing out on life. Okay. There's some very poignant things that happen in our lives. And this was one of the ones that happened to me. This man walked into that meeting thinking that he was just going to take his neighbor to, uh, to see us on that particular day. And he walked out a multimillionaire. So the problem is, though, because Mark is not a lineal descendant of the wealthy older lady, okay, there would be what's called a 10% marital inheritance tax. So if you're not a lineal descendant, meaning you're not of your parents or your children, okay, or you don't have children that you're leaving it to, and it's not your brother and sister, it falls out that lineal relationship area, okay? So in the state of Maryland, you're entitled to pay a 10% marital inheritance tax. So I'm okay to talk about this right now because we did this prior to 2010. <laughs> You're going to love this one. So because Mark's parents were still alive, okay, the wealthy old lady could not adopt Mark because his parents are still alive. So what we did, we did something called a therapeutic adoption. You ever heard of that before? <laughs> we did all this kind of fun stuff. I had a blast in my career. We were tied in. I'm telling you. Um, we had friends that were in the Maryland legislature as it related to Medicaid planning. Um, but at any rate, what happened was we did a therapeutic adoption. But see, the older lady couldn't adopt Mark because Mark's parents were still alive. But you know what? Mark could adopt her because her parents weren't alive. How odd is it that you find a 35-year-old guy adopting a 90-year-old woman? But it's illegal. We don't talk about it on the air too much. Shh, keep that one quiet. So we've also done things called therapeutic divorces, which happens when uh, we take – we use that strategy sometimes when uh, a couple – a uh, married couple, one of them has to go in a nursing home, and rather than lose all the assets, uh, they decide to do what's called a therapeutic divorce. So only one half of the assets are split down as opposed to the entire pool split down and then spent down to a particular level, and then both of them are impoverished. So uh, at any rate, there are lots of wonderful things that uh, that are out there and lots of great stories. I just shared one with you. If you like the story, what I'd like you to do is hit the like button, okay? If you hit the like button, we know whether or not people like this. Because it should be about 80% of the people that are watching should be hitting the like button. So if you want to hear another one of these estate planning stories, I'll be telling them from time to time. There's another one that one of Margaret Ann's favorites. This is a lady that um, had just gotten out. Of, her parents saved her from the Holocaust in Germany. Her mother and father had put her in a basket. A basket, a child in a basket. Imagine this. Here the mother had just given birth to, the, to this little child who later became my client. And she was shoved in as the door was closing on one of the last trains out before the train, before they, they started the extermination up there in Auschwitz. So there's a lot of touching stories. Life will pass you by, folks. But one thing we want to make sure of, we want to be helping you and want to be um, informing you and educating you on actionable items that you need to take now. There are a lot of smart people out there. And you know what? The phones are ringing and, uh, and people are moving their, their money actually moving their receipts for money out of the stock market. They're moving it out of the bank and they're taking control and they're becoming their own bank. And that's what I'm suggesting that you do. The only way that you can really become your own bank is you got to get a hold of the money of your country. So again, if you're in Canada, okay, your currency is, is manufactured and made or minted or whatever you want to call it by the RCM, the Royal Canadian Mint. 
Okay. And you have your own coins up there. Every country has their own sovereign coin, own sovereign silver. But make sure that whatever sovereign coin it is that you're going to be picking up in your respective country is, in fact, real silver. It should be three nines pure or maybe sterling silver, which is 92.5 percent pure. So we're shifting back to this. Some other people are writing in. They're asking questions about Exeter's pyramid. And that's what we showed you as far as silver being very at the bottom of the, of the, uh, the tip of the pyramid. And above that is gold and all the other uh, stratas above there are simply recommendations, not recommendations, representations of the U.S. dollar, which, of course, are just simply that. It's an aberration. OK, so if you want to protect yourself in the future, you're going to have to hold the money of your country and you're going to have to be keep it quiet because you're going to become your own bank, at least until all this is over. OK, the wars are over and all that jazz. Then we'll have a new currency that are coming out. And I've been fortunate enough to be able to show them that currency. Um, so what you need to be doing, though, is you need to have the money of your country that you then can exchange for the currency of your country. But you're not going to be exchanging it all at once to so the very top tier level, like Basel one. OK, is gold. All right. Gold and silver are Basel or uh, top tier level um, assets as far as the banking world is concerned. It's very interesting as far as the banking world is concerned because the Federal Reserve is losing a lot of money. OK, so the Federal Reserve lost one hundred and fourteen billion dollars in 2023. How in the world did they do that? And how much longer do you think they're going to be continuing to do that? So we have this uh, this report here. If you're interested in it, I would like for this program to be more of a collaboration. OK, as opposed to a lecture. Uh, I think we're going to learn more. For instance, there are some people who want to dive in. What is this type two thing all about? Well, you know, join uh, join Road to Ruta, do some research on it, do some further digging on it, and then get back to us and share what you found. That's what I found. Now, I didn't go a real good deep uh, deep uh, dig, deep dig into it, but there is a difference. And as far as I'm concerned, I, I think the difference is something we should be taking note about. I don't think our government is completely honest with us. Do you? And if not, why a ten year contract? So I got to get off of that. I've been getting uh, some hassle and some heat, and um, I want to be able to make sure that we bring uh, non-bumper related news to you as well as the bumper related news. <laughs> you get what I'm talking about? So, uh, again, the different types of bars, you should know this because there's a company out there and it doesn't matter what your situation is. You're sold thousand ounce bars put in a, in a depository. Whether you're 52 years of age or 90 years of age, you're sold bars that go in a depository. You can't do that when you're financial planning, folks. You just simply can't. Uh, it's not a one size fits all thing. Now, it was a good idea to get out of the stock market, right? It was a good idea to get into silver. But why not go the rest of the way? Why not make it a good idea to get into the money of your country and take personal delivery? Does that make sense? So the type ones are just about gone. There's a few of them left at 16,950. So if you're interested in the Eagles, eagles at tedspeaks.net. I'm not pushing anything, okay? What I am suggesting is you get out of the dollar and you get into real money of your country. So one person said, well, it sounds like all you're doing is, is telling everybody to get all in the gold. I said, no, I'm telling everybody to get the heck out of the dollar. There's a big difference. Okay, do you see it? Do you see the difference? I hope you do. So what else do we have to cover here? Uh, well, we talked about Larry Fink taking control of, um, of or making a comment on India's proclivities, proclivities towards holding real gold and real money because that is mo that is money. As a matter of fact, India has their own uh, holiday called Diwali. And what is celebrated is Diwali. See, these cultures are much older than the United States. They've seen currency collapses more than we have. We haven't seen one. There's no one alive as an American living in America today that has seen a currency reset because the last time we had one was when we went away from the greenback. And that was many, many moons ago. And people aren't alive right now that were around when the greenback was here. So you have not seen a currency reset. And what I did was I saw what was going on and I studied Austrian monetary economics. And I'm telling you, the place to be right now is silver. I don't make a commission. It's not a money making thing for me. Uh, you can ask all you want. Call over to Golden Eagle if you want. Ask them. Um, I think their number is what? 1-800-735-1311. That might be their number. Now, we would like to, re to establish some other relationships with other vendors. OK, it's just that I'm very comfortable with Golden Eagle because I've been dealing with them myself for 11 and a half years and they do ship. Uh, and um, uh, there's been, never been a problem. So we got a question just came in. Why is silver at the bottom of the pyramid and not gold? Huh? Interesting. Why is silver at the bottom of the pyramid and not gold? 
when we all been told that silver is much more abundant than gold. It certainly comes out of the ground and much more uh, robust than gold comes out of the ground. So what do you think? Is there really a squeeze going on on silver? Was there a silver squeeze that was put on back in what, 2020 or whatever, when uh, the apes got a hold of the, and they told everybody to go out and buy five ounces of silver? Fellas, girls, five ounces of silver is not going to cut it, okay? You should be looking at this thing in a more serious fashion. If you can wind up with about five to 10 monster boxes, you're going to be pretty well set. And if you can't get the monster boxes, get yourself five or 10 bags of junk silver. And that could be either dimes, quarters, or half dollars. Now, look, you don't know me. I've just come out here, okay? The plan is to make you wealthy first, and then we're going to help you plan it through estate planning. That's the plan. That's the goal. So in every state in the country, okay, I have relationships with a AAEPA, American Academy of Estate Planning Attorneys. I've been using their documents. or have been using their documents for many, many years, 27 years, as a matter of fact. I'm well aware of what they include and what they don't include, and I've actually seen them perform. Okay. Do you recommend constitutional quarters? Absolutely. Sure. But again, we got bit good, better, and best. Okay. The absolute best buy right now is the dimes because you get 14 transactions out of one ounce. Quarters, you're going to get, uh, what, uh, five, five and a half transactions. Okay. So let's suppose that silver takes off and it winds up being an astronomical amount of money compared to what it is that it really should be worth because of the inflation of the US N2 money supply, which, by the way, happens to be decreasing right now. Okay. Um, so, what is best to hold? I think right now, and as long as the dimes are available, which they won't be much longer, these dimes are the bomb. That's the way, that's what you should have because these will able, be able to help you to be able to fractionalize your purchases. So if silver goes to $50,000 an ounce, you'll be able to divide that $50,000 purchase into 14 increments using the dimes. Now, again, this isn't some wild conspiracy theory is how much it's worth. No, it's the other way. How less is the dollar actually worth when you take a look at 217,000 of these dollars needed to buy one ounce of silver? Is that because the USM2 money supply is going down. Is that because there's 394 paper ounces of silver for every one ounce of silver that exists? If everyone else falls on the floor, what is that one person with the ounce of silver going to be offered for his ounce of silver? Okay. I think it's going to be way more than what it actually does cost. So for you to hold real silver in your own hands, many of you have not even seen or know what real money is. I'm going to show you right now. It's gorgeous stuff. Look, Let's see if we can get that up there. Okay. So this is the money of America, okay? And you can see all these are type ones because they do not have a missing read on the outside of them, okay? All right. Now, these are still available. Uh, I think the best price you're going to find anywhere, if they have them, is uh, that sixteen six or sixteen nine fifty. I don't know what they're going for right now. Uh, that's, a, that's not my part of it. So I have a question if you guys have time to take it for this episode. When you purchase gold or silver, is it, in your opinion, to go to the bank and risk an S.A.? report being generated or uh, suspicious activity report is what he means by SA generated or just to simply uh, go in and get it. Um, I don't think that uh, it, it depends upon how much money you're looking at and what they're looking at is they're looking at trends. What you're talking about is anti-money laundering, AML, and you have to take these courses if you are in the financial services industry. So anti-money laundering basically has to do with uh, regular transactions. So if you're just taking, say, $150,000, and you go if you can get that much cash, and go out and buy uh, yourself, say, uh, eight monster boxes or nine monster boxes with that cash, if you're doing this once a month or every other week or twice a year or whatever, okay, yeah, that creates a pattern that will be looked into. But for those of you who are going out and just doing this a one-off thing or a two-off thing, that's not a problem. They're looking for patterns, okay? They're not looking for somebody who's going to one-off. They're looking for somebody that might be, you know, in sex trafficking or child trafficking or drug trafficking or something. A regular flow of dollars coming in and then need to be brought into the financial system so they can be used to pay other bills. Uh, if you have sealed monster boxes, should you keep them sealed? Absolutely. Yeah, do not open those monster boxes. If the strap has the name of the mint on it, that monster box is a lot more, worth a lot more sealed than it is unsealed. Now, for those of you that only have sealed monster boxes, <laughs> you, you get the prize. The sad part is you should, 
should have gotten one open to save about 500 bucks and not an open monster. But if you could squeeze it into your budget, I did notice that uh, there are some open type one monster boxes out there. Now, what this means is that the box came from the mint with all the same year and coins in it, okay? When the strap is cut, typically the tubes are taken out. There's 25 tubes with 20 equals per tube. And these tubes that are circulated and sold and somebody might come in and they want five, somebody wanted three, six tubes or whatever else. But as they come back in, in order to be recirculated, they're then put back in as a type one. Now, sometimes the years are all kept together and sometimes they're not. Also, sometimes you'll find there might be a couple of type twos in there in addition to the type ones. Now, that'll still be part of the count for the 500 eagles, okay? But if you find something like that, you need to take it back. You need to stick up for yourself, okay? So um, as far as the eagles are concerned, to hold them is to love them. It's God's money. And uh, we're going to be talking with Pastor Norris on, uh, on next Sunday, not next Sunday, the following Sunday. And he's going to be telling, as I said, what a talent is. And why did Judas betray Jesus for 30 pieces of silver? What was a piece of silver? Was it pure? What was the weight of it? What was the size of it? Was it uniform? Well, Dr. Par uh, Norris Belcher is going to be looking into all this stuff in the next week. And we're actually going to be going to his uh, his office in, his, in his, uh, his church there. And they also offer a school where we actually sent Medina there for many years. And it's a, it's a very nice uh, school and taught him the right kind of values and everything. But anyway, that's a, a definitely a program I think you're going to want to, uh, to, to, to not miss. Okay. So uh, any other questions we have coming in here right now? What I wanted to get out to you is that they are financializing everything. And you, the value of the dollar is so much less than what it is that you think it is worth right now, that if you can find a place that will take your dollars in exchange for real money, I suggest that you do it. Now, again, you can invest in silver or gold in a, in a raw form or whatever else. But if you invest in the money of your country, it's much more fungible, much more dur well, same durable. But it's, uh, uh, it's more divisible than certainly holding a thousand ounce bar, a hundred ounce bar or whatever else. Now, once all the silver eagles are gone, both one and two, and once all the gold eagles are gone, both one and two, and once all the uh, junk silver is gone, then... Um, I guess we're going to have to be looking at bars and your option to be able to avoid taxation is over because you're going to have to be buying silver as a commodity. So you're listening to the program now, those of you that are following along. OK, and uh, but what we need you to do is hit that like button. If you hit the like button, what it does is it changes the algorithms inside of YouTube and allows this message to be brought to the forefront more so that people are, that are typically interested in this type of message and this type of content are made aware of it and they can learn it as well as you did here today. So what I'd like you to do is hit the like and subscribe button. Okay. Pass this around. Um, just got a question come up. What about land? We talked about that a little bit. Land, the word, the four letter word is not in your deed. You do not own the house. You do not own the land, which is the rocks. You, you do not own the space by which your rocks and dirt and house and everything else is contained in. Because if you did, why would you need minerals, mineral rights? Interesting, huh? And shouldn't you own, actually, the definition of land is the outer perimeters of the land as it goes to the center of the earth, to the heavens. So you actually own the airspace. You should own the airspace above you as well. But a lot of times that's sold. Do the boxes say what year? You know, on the outside, there are um, there are uh, stickers or something to tell you what year it is. OK. And they also have a barcode so that they know for tracking purposes, you know, but it isn't anything that was printed uh, in, it, you know, embossed into the box. It's simply a, a sticker on the side of the box that tells you what the year is. Um, let's see. We might be able to pull one of those up um, for you a little bit later. Uh, today and show you what a, a monster box unsealed strap monster box looks like but for those of you that have been fortunate enough to get a sealed strap monster box don't cut the strap if you have to go order some tubes some type one tubes of eagles keep the box pristine they're going to be worth a lot more money because whoever is going to be taking them back possibly into the treasury will know as a strap monster box that all the ears the years and all the coins are struck at the same time Whereas you get an open monster box, it might have a 2008, 2010, 12, whatever. Or it might have a 2000, late 2021, which would be a type two. Okay. Should we exchange out bars and rounds for ASE? No. You do not want to change silver for silver. Change gold for silver. Change fiat for silver. But you should be concentrating your efforts on more silver. Not so much the type of silver. You made a boo-boo. You didn't buy the silver of your country. You bought the bars. 
suck it up and that's the end of it, okay? Um, you will lose too much in the way of ounces. And this goes as high, obviously your bars aren't going to be as fungible. They aren't going to be as valuable in order to be able to use in commerce, the buy and sell, okay? So it was a mistake. Whoever it is who gave you that advice was mistaken, but we're going to make it right from here on out. So is it better off to correct the mistake? Well, sometimes, and sometimes it's better off just simply to let sleeping dogs lie. Have you heard of that one before? Okay. But we talked about as far as the tail wagging the dog, it's not a good idea to allow that to happen. So if your tax rate is 28%, but you only get that tax deferral of 28%, okay, uh, that, that would currently be owed on those funds, you only get that tax deferral. And you have to pay in order to keep that tax deferral going. Well, what you're doing is you're paying to keep that money away from you and you're paying to pay taxes in the future, which many of us believe will be higher than what they are today. Now, an easy way to answer that question is, do you think income tax rates are going to go up, go down, or stay the same? Well, if the government was running a, a balanced budget, I would say, well, chances are to stay the same. And if they are not running a balanced budget, then I would say the interest rates are going to go up. And if they're running a, deep, uh, a huge surplus, okay, I would think that possibly the interest rates are going to come down in a in an honest economy but that's not what we're looking at right now all markets are are manipulated every dag on one of them the stock market is manipulated through what's called the plunge protection team the president's working group on financial markets the forex market the foreign the foreign exchange markets that is uh, managed and that is um, manipulated through what's called the exchange stabilization fund originally funded by a guy by the name of leon wana that's a long story too but he got two billion dollars and funded that in this account so a couple other things that are out there, um, the Federal Reserve many years ago was taken in front of the, uh, the Congressional Accounting uh, uh, Commission to talk about the $19 trillion that's missing, $19 trillion. So they got the Inspector General in of the Federal Reserve and they were asking her questions as far as where is this $19 trillion? Well, it's still under investigation here. Well, you know, it's been a year and a half and the interest per day is, is really tabulating. Well, we're aware of that, but we do not comment on ongoing investigations. This two-tiered justice system, this two-tiered financial system is coming down. Oh, and I noticed some of you guys are still hung up on the Mac, on the Mason thing. Let's do a little research first, okay? How much time have you spent in spent driving burned children to the children's burn hospital in Philadelphia? How many people, how many orphans have you helped? How much money have you raised? What kind of education are you giving? If you think that the uh, that the Masons are bad, I'm not saying that there aren't bad people in it, but there are good people in that. And if you can't tell that from now, maybe it's time to switch the channel. But please be nice. You're welcome to be here if you're nice. You're not going to be nice, change your moral compass and become nice. If you can't do that, then, you know, go find somebody else. This is all free information. I'm here to help you. And if you can't pick that up, you know, I can't help you. How will the movement of money work if we go back to silver? Well, why don't we take a look at how it worked back in the olden days? Silver has been money since 3000 BC, and it was money clear on up to 1871. Now, that was a good question, sort of a smart ass answer, and I apologize for that. But what is going to happen is these uh, your silver is will most likely be put on the blockchain. Think of this as the highway. It's not the car. It's simply the highway by which your funds are going to be moving around. OK, so once you would decide that you want to move into the dollar, OK, which would be an exchange for the money, which is the eagles okay, or the junk. That is the money, eagles and joint junk in the United States of America. That stuff should be flying off the shelves. If you guys don't get it, you don't get it. But it's not because of the item I'm telling you. So at any rate, um, we're getting pretty close here to the end. Um, are there any other final questions we have? Or Okay, here we go. Will one face amount change on the ASC? I see the maple has $5 face. I don't really know about that. What I've been told and what I've been read, read is that we'll more than likely go back to prices in 1955, which means things will cost a whole lot less. What does that mean, though? You're not going to be making as much. And you're not going to be paid in something real unless you're doing something real. Okay? Again, in the future, if you want to be paid in something real, you're going to have to do something real. And I'm not talking about putting your fingers on a keyboard. I'm talking about tying a nut on a bolt and making it to the right torque. I'm talking about making stuff that then will be sold in Home Depot and Walmart. These stores are currently importing about 90% of their stuff from China. Their people are putting put to work making our stuff. 
folks, we got to get back to making our own stuff. Now, the argument might be, well, I can't get my kid to wake up in the morning. <laughs> that won't be a problem. Your kids, 18 to 22, are going to be mandatory and put in boot camp. And they're going to be taught when to get up, be taught the responsibility. They're going to be taught respect. They're going to do push-ups and sit-ups. They're going to be returned back as real human beings as opposed to simply weeds growing out of your basement. It's going to be a fabulous future we have in front of us. Already, there is a groundswell of activity going on in terms of the infrastructure needed in order to return our country back to a manufacturing company. Check and see what's happening in the material handling business. Find out what's happening with that. Why are the orders going off the shelves right now trying to find material handling equipment? Because when we got rid of the factories, we got rid of all the conveyor belts and, and these uh, the roller things that make it go around and all that stuff. We have turned ourselves, we have turned our back on manufacturing. But not everybody is, is born to be a savant or go to college for that matter. There are people that we need to do all types of jobs here in the U.S. Okay. Uh, we need somebody to be the president. I'm not the president, but uh, um, I know President Trump took on the job of cleaning up the swamp. I'd like to take on the job of cleaning up the financial industry. This is, this is too bad. There are people calling me in tears. They didn't know how to get access to the money. They don't know if it's real. They don't know what they're going to do with a thousand ounce bar, let alone 50 of them. They've lost all their money. Some company has taken it all and put it in. These are kids that aren't even trained in financial planning, taking every last nickel these people have and putting in dory bars in a vault in a foreign state in the, in the United States. But it might be in Utah or Delaware or whatever else. Folks, possession is nine tenths of the law. There's a reason for that, Adam. Adam. Okay. Do we need to worry about government reclaiming silver? No, because we're not on a silver standard right now. And only one half of one percent of the people in the United States are wise enough to hold any metal in the first place. Okay. And why wouldn't the United States coins minted at the United States be subjected to reclamation? Well, <laughs> I guess that could happen. I mean, if we fall under Soviet rule and communist rule, I guess they could take all our silver and we're left with pieces of paper if we're lucky or digits. And I think that was to be their plan. But the number of people that are actually holding real money is very, very small. For instance, when's the last time? How many people you know have one of these? You know what this is? It's called a tube. There are 25 of these in a monster box. Okay. And we also, uh, next time, maybe we'll show you a bag of dimes. But if you remember the big table full of uh, currency notes that we had, as well as the dimes on the table there, that is what constitutional silver looks like. Now, either you're going to get into real money, or I'm going to wind up with your paper dollars, just like I did with the 89 examples. It shouldn't take 89 times of hitting your head against the wall to realize that holding the dollars at this point in time, during the time when the United States is at war, highest inflation we've ever seen, abominable money printing, the, the short-term interest rates are exceeding the long-term interest rates, the yield curves upside down. We got people out of work. We got buildings closing up. We got commercial property that's going down the sinkhole because interest rates are going up and there's not enough tenants to pay the pay the daggone carrying costs. And the buildings weren't built to be converted into condominiums because the heating, air conditioning, plumbing, electric, all that, that's not big enough. It's not designed to be a house. So we got a problem. But I tell you what, if you come out of the other side of this whole malaise that we're going through right now, which could be over very soon, I don't know. It may be over on April 8th. I don't know when it's going to be over. But when it's over, it's over. And that doesn't really matter. What matters is what actions do you take today to prepare for that eventuality? like you to think about that. Um, one last question. I think then we're done. We've been on here about an hour so far. Do we need to worry about government reclaiming silver when the United States coin? We already talked about that. No, it's not a concern in my mind. It's not because we're not on a silver stand. We're not on a gold stand. We're not looking at confiscation. So for those of you that paid a lot of money for rare coins, I think you hurt yourself because they're not recognizable. If you're going to be buying something from somebody, it has to be something that they've seen. OK, not a coin from Timbuktu or Botswana or whatever else. They're going to want to see something. How about let them see the world's most widely recognized one ounce pure silver sovereign coin, which in the United States is an American silver eagle. I know I'm hanking, hawking on this, but it's not as though we're trying to sell eagles or anything like that. We're trying to get you into real money. Once you get the real money, then you have a decent size estate to get into estate planning. And as long as you keep this stuff between you, you won't even have to schedule it in your trust documents. So we're going to be taking on a lot of phone calls after this happens because we're going to be talking about estate planning. And for those of you that missed the vote, 
We're going to see what we can do to help you, but it certainly isn't going to be at today's ridiculously low prices for silver. Right now, without even factoring in inflation from 1980 to now, silver should be, in $1980, $115 an ounce. Now, bacon has gone up five times. Then we're looking at five times that amount of $115 an ounce, which puts us pretty close almost to $600 an ounce. Aren't you hearing people talk about $600, $500 an ounce? You think they're crazy? I don't think they're crazy. I'm an economist and I'm telling you they're not. So, Ted out. Stay tuned. Uh, please let us know what you think. We have this uh, silver show coming up the first or second week in June. If you're interested in that, please let us know. Um, send me an email. Do we have something set up for that yet? Okay. We'll have something set up shortly. Um, can you handle that today? Silver yes. show? Silver show at yes. uh, tedspeaks.net? Yes. Okay. Later today. All right. Here we go, folks. Latest. If you're interested in sending an announcement to us, as far as your interest in, in attending this silver show that we're planning for uh, first or second week in June in Buckhead in Georgia, please let us know by sending an email to silvershow at tedspeaks.net. Silvershow at tedspeaks.net. We'll have something out. If those of you want to want to connect with us, Ted Speaks or whatever, do that. We'll get your at email address and you'll be on the list at that point. We are planning a commemorative coin. It'll be a one ounce uh, silver coin. Of course, you'll need to be paying for that. In addition, we can't, can't talk our sponsor into giving away 10,000 of those things for everybody that comes. But I can tell you, we're not going to run out of beer and food. We're going to have a blast. You guys from Canada, come on down to the party. It's happening down south. Come on to Georgia. We'll check out the Porsche cars. We'll also see what other kind of sponsors and, and good stuff we can get. You'll leave with a whole lot of swag. Bring an empty suitcase. <laughs> you'll need some stuff to bring home. So, folks, thanks so much for the love and support. I really feel it uh, from you guys. Uh, I have noticed some occasional nasty comments. If you guys would deal with them for me, I'd really appreciate it. Um, they are. They're helping. Yeah. We have lots of uh, lots of folks helping out there. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, we no, both I, do. Yeah, it's very disturbing to see that when I'm giving out so much and not getting anything back outside of some, some noise. But anyway, I trust you and I love you. And God loves you. And we got more to come. This is going to be a blast. You're on for the journey of your lifetime. Your future is so bright. You're going to have to wear sunglasses. This is this is dynamite. You got to get prepared, though. You got to come out of the other end with assets or we won't have anything to talk about. You won't have an estate. OK, so Ted here. Talk to you later. You got all the information replayed. It was going a little fast. Some people said I'd talk fast. I take in information at about one point five times speed. So you go down to the bottom, you see a little gear thing. It's settings. You can click on that, increase the speed. So for those of you that uh, like one fellow, he's Chinese and didn't speak English very well, I suggested him back it down to 0.75, back it down to 0.5. Uh, I don't think 0.25 is going to work for you. I think it's going to be a talk like Donald Duck or whatever. Okay, I wouldn't do that. What I would do is uh, is try it at 0.75, and uh, it might go a little slower for you. And for those of you that have already seen this information before, what I suggest you do is boost it up to 125. You all should do that anyway, because I'm telling you, 1.25 is not something you can't deal with, but you're saving 25% of your time. And I don't mind if you spend 25% less time with Ted, okay, as long as you pass it around. I have an announcement. <laughs> I'm back on camera. Sorry. <laughs> We have 100 and, or at just a few seconds ago, 147 folks were watching and I glanced at the thumbs up. We have 147 thumbs up. Thank you, folks. That's wow. amazing. That's love. That's love. And that's what we need. Thank you very much. You and you appreciate what we're doing. I'll tell you. You're going to have a whole lot of fun. These estate planning stories are off the charts. Imagine 27 years of doing this. We have stories. We're not going to name names. We have stories and situations that are off the charts. One that you may want to hear. It's called the Sly Gray Fox. <laughs> God, this is hilarious. This a CPA. His name is Vince. Vince is about as, as calm and as conservative as it comes. I'm going to tell you about his line at the end of this meeting. It, it, it'll blow you away. It actually starts off very sad. But it ends. It ends that uh, we're on the in the favor of uh, of our client. Stay tuned. Yep. Stay tuned. All right, folks. Get the stuff. Get the um, get the. Uh, where is that? Okay. Here's how you get a hold of us. Get the silver chart. Where's the silver chart at? Um, we'll get it together one of these days, here, folks. Um, have you seen the silver chart? Earlier. Gone. 
Wow. So just reach out, reach out for the uh, silver chart. Here it chart. is. Here's the silver chart. Okay. All right. And Carl is the guy that we need to thank for this. Carl did all this on his own and he factored in for inflation. And uh, we owe Carl a debt of gratitude. Thank you very much. I know he's tuning in. And Carl has his own section on a website here pretty soon. Carl's Corner. So, uh, folks, if you'd like uh, to make some comments or whatever you think that would uh, like to put us on your website, please make them. This is a collaboration. It's a collaboration, okay? It's not an edict. It's not uh, reaching down to you like this. You give, I give, we give, we all win, okay? All right, folks, thanks for having me in your home. Have a good day. Bye-bye.